If you are experiencing foundation issues, get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. Happy birthday this morning to Janiah Scott. Janiah is six years old today. In his dreams, Jeff Bell is that young. Good morning to you, sir. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm good. Uh, coach Jeff Bell, the head baseball coach at the Silicon Hey, It's a great time for spring sports at Silicon and not just baseball, but both soccer teams as well. That's right. Uh, soccer's playing well. We've got several in the state track meet. Uh, yeah. Um, baseball team's having some good days. So, it, yeah, it's a good time to be a, a, a Silicon sports fan. A doubleheader sweep uh, against St. Paul's last Friday down in Mobile, and who would have thunk it? The Aggies uh, uh, swept a doubleheader and uh, come back home for the third round. And, uh, uh, you know, everybody talked about how good St. Paul was, and they are, mm -hmm. but it's how you play that day. It is. And, you know, the, the my favorite thing about the team is – they don't really care who they play. I mean, they're they're gonna they're gonna show up every day. They're gonna play the game the way that that they play it. Um, you know, it could be St. Paul's or anybody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's as I told I told people the other day that that they beat a lot of teams because of the name on the jersey. Sure. And ours ours don't care whose name's on the jersey. They're gonna go they're gonna go play anyway. 4-3 the first game, and that was kind of a nail-biter. Walk us through that a little bit. It was uh, it was back and forth the whole game. They they took a one nothing lead. We, we made a throwing error, and uh, they ended up moving a guy around. And next half inning, we answered, tied it back up. Um, and it stayed one-to-one -one for a couple innings, and then we got – we scored two runs, I think, in the – top of the sixth and then they answered us and scored two runs in the bottom so here we um, go and then and then we scored one in the seventh i mean it was it was sort of nip and tuck the whole time walk us through the seventh inning <laughs> tell you the best i remember <laughs> um our half of the inning was we had lead off single then we stole a base bunted a guy to third and then andrew schmidt you know, came through for us. And, uh, you know, people were to say, who, who was your MVP of the game? I wouldn't be able to tell you because mm -hmm. everybody in the lineup had something to do with that win. We talked last week on this show about those little intangibles, mm -hmm. those little things. You mentioned throwing air in the first, mm -hmm. but you got a, a, a single a bunt and moving the runner along. Those are huge things in a tight game like that. Yeah, and I'll tell you where – I think it's it's teams that do those things. They don't care about the the, the personal glory mm -hmm. that they may get from from playing the game. It's they want to win, and it's really whatever I have to do to win, whatever the team needs me to do, whatever I'm called on to do, I go out and do it. And then you know when it's your opportunity when you're when you have when you're at the plate. With a chance to win the game, like in Andrew's case, when he mm -hmm. when he got the, the the hit in the seventh inning, you know they've they've sort of grown accustomed to sort of relishing that role. When when it's my turn, mm -hmm. you know it's it's my turn to come through. One through nine. One through nine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you win the first game four three. And, you know, you got a doubleheader and you're going into game game one, you think pitching, how am I going to go? Uh, second game, 7 nothing, and, and uh, you got strong pitching in both games. Yeah, Luke Vincent has really had a good second half of the year. I mean, matter of, well, I say good second half, he's had a good year. I um, don't think he's given up a run yet this year. Um, and now he... I haven't talked to him. He may have been nervous as he could be, <laughs> um, but you couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just went out there and and just made pitch after pitch. And of course, the kids played good behind him too. We played good defense the whole weekend, um, and and the hits were a little easier to come by in game two, which has a lot to do with their starting pitching. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Luke, he was. I mean, from the first pitch to the last pitch, he just went out there and. Whatever was called, he you know that's the pitch he made. 
You always prepare for three games in the best two or three, but it's good to get that doubleheader sweep and, and head back home. And uh, I'm sure it's a nice ride back to Sylacauga. Yeah, it was. <laughs> It was a it was a real fun ride from from the field back to the hotel. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I bet, I bet. Um, but yeah, the 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 ride back home because I've made that trip from Mobile before <laughs> when it wasn't such good mm-hmm. news. So I'd I'd much rather come back with two wins and two losses. For so sure. twenty one wins on the season for mm-hmm. Sylacauga and. Uh, you know, coming into the year, you'd have taken that for sure. But here we are in round three, mm-hmm. and Bibb County, the Choctaws, come to Sylacauga tomorrow for a doubleheader. They do. And, you know, going back to my days in Brookwood, it was a team that you know, we played We played Bibb County two mm-hmm. times a year every year. So I, well, I may not know as much specifically about this team. I know the community, and I know, mm-hmm. I know how the kids are, and I know how hard they're going to play. Um, and it's going to be a good series. They're a lot like we are. They'll 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 get in a close game and fight you. Um, so it's for anybody that's going to come out and watch it. It's going to be a pretty exciting series to be a part of. I think. Uh, Bibb County out of uh, Centerville, Alabama, the Choctaws uh, in round three against Sylacauga uh, here at Walton Cruz Field. And, uh, you know, you went on the road, but it sure is good to be home, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, I tell you, it was, it, was, it was almost like being at home. We mm-hmm. traveled so well yeah. to Mobile. Um, but, yeah, it's always good to be at home. It, it's, you know, everything's familiar. You know where everything is. And, you're gonna have the the people from town are gonna come. The students are gonna come. Uh, I expect a really, really big crowd this weekend. And of course, Bibb County's gonna travel pretty well too. Um, but it's just different being at home. Yeah. Especially, especially if you get to win. Yeah. <laughs> people people talk about uh, Jeff. Uh, uh, you know, this team or that team, by the third round, everybody's good. That's right. Uh, you, you always, I think you and I have talked about this, you're going to print off a bracket and see, you know, who plays who, you know, in the first round. And you you kind of in the back of your mind mm-hmm. start to, to kind of plot out how it's going to go. And as I, Bibb County's coach, Coach May, he and I had talked earlier in the week, or actually he had a game three Saturday. We yeah. were on the way home. And uh, he said, hey, if I win, you know, I'll get with you about game times and all that. I was like, well, I'm pretty sure we've destroyed everybody's brackets by now because <laughs> I'm sure most people thought it was going to be Charles Henderson and St. Paul's in mm-hmm. the third round, not not Selicog and Bibb County. Yeah. Uh, first pitch tomorrow? At 5 o'clock, yeah. Um, now, <laughs> the gates will be open early. So they'll, they'll be – I've already had – you know, requests for people to come in and set their chairs yeah. up. So it's, uh, if you plan on coming, you might want to come early. Yeah, and they'll have plenty of food there. And mm-hmm. it's just a festive time for high school baseball. It's graduation month, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so how has work been this week with your team? Um, there was a bit of a letdown mm-hmm. Monday, which is expected. I mean, it, it didn't. It didn't ruin my day and think now we don't have a chance. But it's, you know, you come off those big wins on Friday and they're ready to play the next team. You know, then the, the, the few days of practice is, is almost torture to those guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, the, the highs of playing those games is, is the fun part and the work that you have to put in during the week is not the fun part. And, and it was – Monday was a bit of a letdown, but it gets gradually better, especially the closer we get to games. They start to start – they begin to ramp up that intensity where they're ready to go again by the end of the week. It's got to make you feel good to have the good, not just depth, but good pitching depth going into a best-of-three series again. Yeah, well, you go into every series expecting there to be three games mm-hmm. and, and needing multiple pitchers. In all three of them, um, and that's. I think if if it comes down to a third game, I feel pretty good about our chances. We do have, of, of you know, we talk. We've talked all season mm-hmm. about Grant Walker and Luke Vincent and how they've grown up this year, and and even though they're sophomores, they they haven't pitched like it. Um, 
so the depth that we have on the mound, um, we feel pretty good about, and it, and it continues to get better with 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 each outing they make. Hitting the baseball, another big key. Got to get got to get men on base. Mm -hmm. uh, Jordan Ridgeway has he's tore it up lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has. He he's had a really good year. Um, and I tell you, it's it sort of you know just like I said a few minutes ago is kind of hard to find the MVP mm -hmm. because at certain times each of them has been um you know Peyton Natale has games where he's get, like matter of fact he he drove in a big run uh Friday Andrew did um Zach do Nick Malden is the same the same names every week but it's all through the lineup they all contribute in some way uh your coaching staff of course, uh, after uh, the doubleheader sweep, you begin to turn your eyes. Either Charles Henderson or, or, or Bibb County at that particular time didn't know which one because of game three on Saturday. How important is you, that you have this staff that you have that, you know, you talk baseball uh, and you begin preparation for the next step? Yeah. Well, we uh, – that, those conversations were had. Me and Matt talked a good bit on the way back about – the sort of the pitching rotation. Mm -hmm. Who's going to pitch when? That's a, it. That turns out to be a pretty important thing if you if you guess right. <laughs> you know, you have to overcome some things if you guess wrong. But so we 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 talked a good bit, and we talked most times a, a pretty good bit about who's going to start, mm -hmm. um, who's going to relieve, and who's going to close. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's although it is the deeper you get the playoffs. Those conversations are had usually weekly basis at any point yeah. in the season anyway. Even though you as a head coach uh, has the final, uh, you know, you you write off the final okay, mm -hmm. uh, Matt Collier is really, really uh, uh, important to your staff. Yeah, he is. He, uh, he manages our pitching staff from bullpens to – you know, us talking about who's going to pitch when to calling pitches during the game. Uh, yeah, he's a very important uh, part of our program. Um, you know, I'm, the better he gets, the more I wonder how long I'm going to yeah. get to keep yeah. him around. <laughs> um, but he's really good. Um, kids love him. He puts in hours of work. Um, when everybody else is ready to go home, He's going to hang around with a couple of our hitters and, mm. and work extra. Uh, it's just, it's who he is. Um, you can't fake it. You can't teach it. You just, you know, you're you're sort of born that way, just to to be that kind of that kind of coach and put that kind of work in. Yeah. Finally, this morning, uh, you scouted uh, uh, Bibb County and know the Choctaws. Talk a little bit about this team. They. They're going to be tough. Um, they're not going to come in here scared of us in any way. They're not going to be intimidated in any way. Um, they're going to feel like they belong. Um, they're going to believe they can win the whole thing. They're going to do a lot of things right. Uh, they're going to put balls in play. They're not going to strike out. They, I'll tell you what they're like. It's going to be a lot like playing us. Mm. Um now they they won't look the part. They'll have some small guys, some big guys, and we're gonna look up the seventh inning, and it's gonna be a game. There there is a very proud community and a proud program. All right, first pitch tomorrow, five o'clock. Five o'clock. Doubleheader on uh, uh, Friday at Walton Cruz Field. Third game if necessary on Saturday. Silicaga hosting uh, Bibb County in round three of the five A. A high school baseball playoffs, and we continue to live the dream. Let's live it another weekend. Yes, sir. One more. All right, Coach Jeff Bell, our guest this morning on Daybreak Live, back after this.